This is a uh, short lecture um, going further with the critical path. We have certain characteristics that are associated with the critical path, right? So number one, the critical path is the longest path through the network. So if you look at this diagram that we made yesterday, we've got three paths. We've got the path on the top, which is A, B, E, and H. So if we add across this, we're going to get five plus three plus six plus eight, right? So that's the duration of this path, which happens to be around 22 days, right? Then we have the second path, which is the one through the middle, and that is path A, C, F, H. And if you add across this, we get a 24 days, right? So that's the longest path. And then we have the third path through this network, which is at the bottom here, and that is path A, D, G, H. And if we add the duration of the activities here, five plus five plus five, which is 15, plus eight, which is 23. So all these two paths, the one at the top, which adds up to 22, and the one at the bottom adds up to 23, the one in the middle adds up to 24. So which one is the critical path then? It is the one through the middle because it is the longest path through the network diagram because it is coming out uh, to be 24 days in that. Now that does not mean that activities B, E, or D, G are irrelevant or not important for the completion of the project. What that means is that simply the path in the middle is 24 days in length. Therefore, this project is going to take a minimum of 24 days to complete, right? So we take the longest path through the network, which in our case is the center segment, and that is the longest path, which is 24 days, and therefore we declare it to be the critical path. Now, point number two of the characteristics of the critical path is that it is the shortest time in which a project can be completed, right? So here we've got path A, B, E, H, which is 22 days in length. So if after 22 days, of the project, we check the progress, we will find that there are still some activities that are ongoing and the project is not yet completed, right? If we take the bottom path, which is 23 days, that means that after uh, 23 days, there would still be some more work needed to complete that project. So basically what the critical path uh, is doing for us is that it is showing us the minimum amount of uh, working days necessary in order to complete the project. So that does not mean that B, E, D, G are less important. What it means is that a minimum of 24 days is needed for the project's completion, right? So the longest path is taken as the critical path, and it is uh, a little bit of a confusing way of saying it, but this is how generally the literature states it, is that it is the shortest time in which the project can be completed. Now, the third characteristic of the critical path is that it has zero float. Now, what that means is that if, if we take the top path, A, B, E, H, uh, which is 22 days in length, so 24, which is the critical path, minus 22 implies that there's a two-day float period available on the top path, that is A, B, E, H. So we have two days of float available. Uh, now it is up to us whether we consume the two additional days on activity B or we consume the two additional days on activity E or we delay B by one day or take one day extra on it or take an extra day on E. So it's, it's up to us how we spread those two days across B and E, but uh, the essence of the idea is that B and E both have two days of float time available. If we look at the bottom path, A, D, G, H, we find that this is 23 days in that. So 23 uh, subtracted from the critical path duration, which is 24, turns out to give us the result of one day float. So D and G, 
both have one day of float time available. So meaning that D could be delayed by a day or G could be delayed by a day, uh, yet we will still be able to complete the project within 24 days, right? So if, just, just play with this, right? See, uh, if we convert this D to six days or convert the G to six days, what would happen? Uh, something very uh, curious is going to happen, uh, which is that let's suppose we take uh, D and we change it to six days, right? Uh, notice what happens in the network diagram. We find now that uh, there are two parts which are now red in color, which is the one in the middle and the one at the bottom. By consuming that one extra float day, the two parts, the center part ACFH and the bottom part ADGH, both have become 24 days in length. So this part is now also the critical part and the bottom part also in red color is also the critical part. So in this case now, uh, by consuming the float time of the non-critical path activity, they also turn into uh, the critical path activities, right? So I'll, I'll change D back to its initial uh, duration, which was five days. Uh, we could uh, play with B, right? Let's suppose we take B and we change it from three to four days. We have just added one day. And if you recall, I mentioned to you that activity, uh, sorry, uh, did I just change? B, C is four, B is four. Yeah, so I just changed B from three to four days. Now, does that make any difference on the diagram? Look, we still have the center path in red color and the two paths, the one at the top and the one at the bottom are still in blue color. So what does this tell us? It's telling us that by delaying B by one day, uh, this path still is non-critical. If you add these up now, if you add 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, that is going to come out as 23 because this was initially 22 days. Now it has become 23 days. So the project's uh, duration has not changed. or uh, In other words, the ending date of the project has not changed at all. Uh, now we can go back to our diagram and let's delay uh, the next activity. Uh, after B, which is E, uh, let's delay that by one day and make it seven days, right? And if we go back to our network, um, voila, we find that now the top two parts are now critical and the bottom part is non-critical. So in essence, when we consume the float of the non-critical path activities, they actually also turn into the critical path. Right? So as long as we're not consuming their float, uh, nothing bad is happening. And the, the, the funny idea is that you are consuming the float, yet and still the ending date of the project is not changing. The total duration of the project is still 24. So you can add uh, across the top path, and that's now 24. And you can add across the bottom path, and that is also now uh, 24 as well, right? So no change has taken place. So I can uh, take B back to its initial uh, time period of three days, and I'll take E back to its initial time period of six days, and uh, check my network diagram again, and you'll find now that uh, the center path remains as the critical path, and the top uh, and bottom paths are non-critical, that's why we're seeing them in blue color. Right Now, what you uh, may want to uh, note with yourself is that, you know, the center path is 24, the bottom path is 23, the top part, uh, path is 22. So the number 23, which is on, on the bottom path, is very close to 24, right? Just by one day delay in either D or G or a half day delay on D and a half day delay on G is going to change uh, a, D, G, H into the critical path as well. So we call A, D, G, H as uh, near to the critical path, right? I'll just write it as near to the critical path. So this means that we not only have to be concerned as project managers about the critical path activities, but we also have to keep an eye on those activities 
that or those parts that are very close to the critical parts duration. Uh, so in this case, ADGH is just one day close to the critical part duration. So we have to be very careful about activity D and G. Now we have to manage any delays on these so that uh, nothing bad happens to the project. Right now, if you remember, I said if you click on um, this information button here, not to be working, okay, uh, something's wrong. Okay, anyway, uh, by clicking on the information, uh, we could actually figure out or have a look at basically the uh, duration of the project, right? So we could have checked here by going into the statistics and seeing that the critical parts duration is 24 days. So this project is now 24 days. Now, look, what would happen if I take any activity for example, A, C, F, or H, any of the activities on the critical path. So, uh, and delay it. Let's, uh, let's, for example, take C, right? Uh, and make that uh, five days in that, right? So what happens now to the project? Look, the duration of the project has increased by 25 days. Now, on the other hand, what would happen if I change that uh, activity C uh, and reduce it by a day. Uh, hopefully it will bring down the duration of that project by one day as well, right? So in that way, we say that the critical part has zero float on it. We cannot um, bear to experience any type of delay on the critical part. And the fourth characteristic of the critical part is that there can be more than one critical part. So you just saw that if I change uh, the bottom uh, part, A, D, G, H, uh, and I add an additional day to D or an additional day to G, what happens is then I've got more than one critical part, right? Uh, if I add uh, two days to B or E, what happens is that I'll have now all the parts to be critical, right? So at the bare minimum, I'm going to have one critical part, but I can have many more critical parts than one. I could have, in this case, because I've got three total parts possible, so I could have a minimum of, I will have a minimum of one critical part and a maximum of three. So the number of parts uh, on, on the diagram basically is the limitation of how many critical parts are possible. Right? Now, the last point may not be very relevant to us now because we're not doing these exercises on the whiteboard, rather we're using the software to do it. Uh, but if you remember, uh, we had talked about this very briefly, that there are two methods, right? Two methods uh, of critical path analysis. The first method is called the activities on arrows. And the second method is called the activities on nodes, right? Uh, the activity on arrows method is also abbreviated as AOA, activity on arrows, right? Uh, it is also known as the arrow uh, diagramming method, uh, or, and that can be abbreviated as ADM. Right? And the second method is the activities on nodes. So that would be abbreviated as AON or the precedence diagramming method. Uh, and we can name or abbreviate this as PDM, right? So these are the two methods that are possible. Um, now, if we're using the first method, which is the activities on arrows, then we are going to get to dummy activities, right? Uh, but because the arrow diagramming method is a specific method uh, that was initially developed for computers, but it turned out that it was quite difficult to program uh, this procedure into the computer, so therefore nobody programmed it and it got left uh, to this, this uh, uh, consequence that we now use it just to do sort of back of the napkin quick and dirty type of calculations using a piece of paper, right? So if you're using the activity on arrows method, you will have dummies. But using the 
activity on nodes method, which was actually developed to be done on a piece of paper. Uh, however, it turned out that it was more easy to program this. Uh, so all these softwares that you encounter are using some extended amended version of the precedence diagramming method. Uh, so in this method, we don't have any dummies. So therefore, point number five of the characteristics of the critical path is a specific characteristic that applies to the activity on arrows or the arrow diagramming method. This uh, point number five does not apply to the activity on nodes or the precedence diagramming method. For that matter, right? So just to be um, clear again, uh, the longest part, right? So you add across all your paths. You can do it manually, or you can use the uh, forward pass and backward pass method, which we're not doing because the computer is doing it, uh, it for us automatically. But uh, the longest path will be the path that we will declare as the critical path, and that is the least amount of time required in order to complete the project. The critical path activities have absolutely no float, meaning that no delays are possible on the critical path activities at all, right? Any delay on the critical path activity is going to shift the ending date of that project by that delay amount that you have experienced, right? And it is not a problem to have more than one critical path, rather your entire network diagram could be critical if you have the numbers in, in such a sequence. Uh, so all your paths could be critical, which means that it's going to be a highly difficult project to manage because any type of a delay on any activity is going to cause the project to become delayed by that amount of time. Right? Now, how we use this critical path is that we focus more our, uh, of our managerial capabilities on the critical path activities and we keep on ensuring that these activities do not get delayed. If any activity does experience a delay, then what we do is that we borrow resources from the non-critical path activities, put them onto the critical path activities to sort of expedite our work and make it go faster so that we can recover from any delays that we have experienced. Um, but uh, because the non-critical path activities have uh, floats available on them, using those resources, delaying those activities are not adversely affecting the end uh, time of the project at all, and the project is still able to complete on time. Right? Thank you very much.